I fly in your flight simulator like this. And I hope you're not flying like this in real life, unless you are him. So in this series you're gonna learn how you can go from flying like this to flying like a real professional pilot. Uh, so s we'll start is wh what is it about what this concept about flying by the numbers or and where it came from. So it was first introduced and gained popularity during the wo World War II where the uh, United States needed to turn a lot of uh, people into professional pilots very quickly and they needed to have some standardized uh, and really efficient system so they can put somebody in a different type of planes and again the numbers will be different but the principles will be the same and they can go and execute their missions. Before we start, just a quick disclaimer. Uh, this is something you know we shared as a pilot to other pilots or to a flight uh, simulator enthusiast, uh, but in no means this will substitute your uh, uh, you know formal uh, flight training. But if it's something you're already going through, uh, you know talk to your CFI about it. But uh, if you also uh, flying in the simulator, you can uh, easily implement this and really. Uh, go to the next level. And before we go to the demo, word to our sponsor, which is us, <laughs> Flight Sim Builder. So in this video, we're going to be using um, this two G1000 units with uh, X with X plane. Um, really great, easy to set up. And in this video, you will see how how helpful it is to have those units, and again, how it takes your flight simulator to the next level, so you can start implementing a more advanced and complex um, concepts into your flying. And really going from you know uh, playing a game to flying a simulator. All right, so uh, what is this uh, flying by the number? So th there's a really just a couple concepts which you need to understand. So we'll start from uh, from the main one, which is power plus configuration equals performance. So basically what it means, if you apply predetermined power and put the airplane in predetermined configuration, you always get the same performance. And then if you know those settings, right, what is the power settings and what's the configuration, and then you apply it to one of the phases of flight, which is uh, takeoff, climb, cruise, descent, approach, land, then you can basically just apply the needed power settings and configuration and the plane will fly basically on its own. And not only this is an easier way to uh, fly uh, really stabilized uh, approaches and, and really kind of be ahead of the plane, but it's also uh, something which is helps you in a non-standard situation or new planes where, again, there are so many things going on, but if you know those numbers, you know, set the power to what you need it, set the configuration, gear, flaps, prop, and you're good to go. So uh, this is why it's really uh, something um, drilled upon in uh, airline flying. So if you see some videos or how the airline flying, they, they know the exact numbers of the power for each of those phases, and they just set them and they monitor. And you will see how uh, applying this to your flight simulator, it's actually a lot of fun because you go in from just playing a game, with your you know, throttle left and right, so something even eight years old can probably do. But flying like a, a real airplane and not just a real airplane, but flying it as a commercial pilot. So you will see how great it is. And once you know those, you can start adding on other concepts, which we will also cover in this series, like a more advanced navigation, uh, flying IFR approaches and so on. But unless you know those basics, it's kind of hard to, to actually do multiple things or do it right. Right, so it's gonna be kind of the basis and foundation. And in today's video, we're gonna focus on power and performance. And on the next video, we're gonna talk about the configuration. All right, so here we just captured the 6,000 feet. Uh, and, uh, and again, we're flying Cessna 172. So one thing I wanna see first, uh, if we apply 2,300 RPM, Are we gonna get the speed which published in POH, right? So this is actual Cessna pilot operating handbook. So at 6,000 or 2,300 feet at standard pressure, um, through airspeed should be 104. So we at 109. Uh, let's see, it's gonna stabilize. Okay, RPM 2,300, and we get 104. Look at that, pretty good. Um, yeah. 
Alright, so but we're gonna look at indicating airspeed, so it's uh, 95, right? So the first thing we're gonna demonstrate, which is, you know, a lot of people is not gonna believe, but let's turn off autopilot, let's turn off flight director, right? So now we basically hand fly. Uh, I'm not gonna even touch the yoke. I'm gonna help with uh, with uh, with the rudder pedal a little bit, uh, but we fly at 95. So basically, what what we've done, we trimmed our plane, right? For like a lot of you would say for level flight, but in reality, we trim our elevator for 95 knots, right? So let's write it down. So we 2,300 RPM level and we at 95 knots, right? So the way the plane were designed, plane will try to maintain that 95 um, airspeed. So we'll demonstrate it. So first we're gonna reduce the power from 2300 uh, to 2000, right? So we're gonna reduce it by 300 RPM. Okay. All right. So what you see, once we reduce the power, the nose comes down, right, a little bit, and now we gain in power, uh, gaining speed. So we at 97, and we're going down 400 feet per minute. So what basically is going to happen? The plane will os oscillate a couple times, as it will go down a little bit. Uh, more steeper, but then once it picks up the speed, the nose gonna come back up, then comes back down, but less than the first time, up, down, until it stabilizes. So we will see how it looks in the sim. I'll just give it some time. So now we're at 97 and we're 400 feet per minute. But look at the airspeed, now it's stabilizing at 95. 96, and then it's gonna now it's gonna go up again as we pick up speed 97 you can see the nose coming up back to 96 and 95 all right so we'll call it uh, 400 feet per minute so 95 knots 2000 rpm and 400 feet per minute all right so um, let's now, so we reduced by 300 uh, RPM and we got about 400 feet per minute descent, right? So let's now go other way, right? And let's add from 23, let's go to full throttle, which should be on 25, 26, okay. So if you, if you guessed, right, again, First nose comes up, right, as we added power. The airspeed decreases, 89. But then the nose drops when it slows down. Back to 92, 93. And I'm just helping with the rudder to keep us level. 98. So now we're climbing 900 feet per minute, but the speed is going down, right? 93, so basically it's doing this. And we'll just give some time to stabilize. 92, 94, going up again. So what we would expect to uh, to climb at about 400 feet per minute with 95 knots. Uh, actually, we added just 200 RPM, right? So it's going to be like 300 RPM uh, feet per minute. Okay, 95. So you can see how it's stabilizing, right? Again, went too much up. Now it's gonna come down. Just like an autopilot, right? Your trim, <laughs> you set it up, indicated airspeed 95, here you go. 
The only thing is like when it uh, oscillates, you don't want it to go too much up, right? So that's why you would help it in real life. In real example, you're not gonna let it do all this, right? You're just gonna help with your yoke a little bit. So it basically, but now you know what are you looking for, right? So, um, all right, so 92. And while this, while it's doing this, uh, just a side note, you know, why we're doing it in X-Plane. So I tried to do it in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator and it wasn't as uh, as precise as in X-Plane. It was still doing it, but uh, it was a little bit off. It was uh, not uh, pitching up or pitching down as much. So if you, if you don't believe me, try it out. It's not to say, you know, Microsoft Flight Simulator, but uh, sim, it's, it's beautiful, it's nice, and for the navigation, uh, but there are some things with the flight model I think can be improved. Um, but yeah, so, you know, it's going back and forth a little, but now we're at about 95 knots. And let's see, so let's let it do one more. Inflation, nose coming down. 500 feet per minute. It's kind of stabilizing somewhere here. Looks like 400 bit per minute and 2,540. Okay, so you know, good. So, but now I can also just go and let's say I want to level off, right? So if I put it to 2,300 feet uh, RPM, so what it's gonna do? It's gonna level off, right? And it's again, it's gonna do this a little bit, up and down, up and down. So what it means, right? Like, um, it, it's really good and interestingly <laughs> enough, uh, not a lot of people think about it this way, right? But this is where you can fly your plane by knowing those numbers. So for example, if I want to descend at the 100, if it, let's say, you know, I'm flying this Cessna, right? And I'm flying at 2300. So let's put the autopilot back. Uh, let's put, you know, altitude for now. And let's do heading, let's come back. So let's say I'm flying 2300 feet, you know, 95 knots, all looking good. And now I want to descend right so how much power do i want to reduce and how much nose down i want to put so if you know this figures which is in our case 2000 rpm 95 knots 400 feet per minute so i can do this i can set my altitude let's say i want to go to 3000 right i'm gonna press vs and i'm gonna go uh, negative 400 feet and then I just gotta put the power to 2000 RPM. So if you fly it, your passenger would not even notice, well, they would notice the descent, but it's really smooth because what's gonna happen, yeah, we're gonna start coming down and autopilot's gonna help with this uh, uh, oscillation, right? But it's really all that's gonna happen is now you go in at the same speed, 400 feet per minute, and you're going down, right? So, uh, really nice, really precise flying. You don't have to think about it. All you need to know, it's 500 feet per minute, 2000 RPM. And for Cessna, again, you know, there's no prop, no gear. So, um, and we will kind of cover some of this in, a, in the next episode. But then, all you basically need to know, what is my power plus configuration for uh, for my takeoff, for my climb. And when you climb, right, and when you set up the right settings and you have the right configuration and you know what to expect, you know, what airspeed. And if the airspeed doesn't adapt, then you know something else is off, right? So it's really kind of another 
check. But if you're just flying it by, you know, pulling all the f throttle and trying to, um, you know, just uh, fly it, you, you you don't have a reference, like how it's supposed to fly, what's the airspeed supposed to be. Um, so you, and there's not that many segments, right? Takeoff, climb, cruise, descent. And if it's, um, you know, we can add approach if it's uh, IFR or it's just a land. So not that many, you know, segments. You just need to know the numbers for the plane you fly. So again, uh, coming down 400 feet per minute. So for some reason we're going 350 feet per minute. Um, hitting, yeah, so. And uh, 2,000. Let's now level off, right? So level off, so let's say this the ATC told you to level off. You press uh, altitude. And now you just add the power to 23, right? You don't have to think about it, but you know what you need to do. So now, again, it's just going to fly the same 85, right? Okay, and it's again, let's say BTC told you to climb, then you know again what's the settings. Um, and then we're gonna add some more to it, right? So what's gonna happen when I put, in this plane there is no gear down, but let's say I put my 10 flaps, right? And we will see how much effect it has on your uh, performance. Again, power plus configuration equals performance, right? So in today's video, we we again covered power and performance, and in the next video, we're gonna talk about configuration. And if you're using a glass cockpit or a G1000 like we used today, you will see how great it is for really uh, making the precise speech changes. Back in the day, you know, when you look at attitude indicator, it was really hard to differentiate between five and seven degree speech, right? The really good pilots could do it, but uh, it was hard, right? And today's day, it's really easy to see where it's 5% and 7% and we're gonna use that to our advantage so we can really put the plane in the right configuration and we can always get the same uh, result. Good, well, uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, little short video. Again, this is the first one just to introduce this concept. Uh, comment below if you try it, try it in the Microsoft Flight Simulator, try it in X-Plane if you fly it and uh, let me know how it went and if you were able to 